The saint whom the church honors today, May the 1st, St. Joseph the Worker, is certainly a very timely observance, an important observance in these difficult days. Now the month of March is traditionally recognized as the month of St. Joseph, whose principal feast day is March 19th. In like manner, this new month, the month of May, is traditionally considered to be the month of Mary. It is the month of May processions, of crowning of statues of Mary, of encouragement to say the rosary, of the Regina Chaley prayer, and of course of Mother's Day. Yet today, May the 1st, the church honors her spouse as we celebrate the feast of St. Joseph the Worker. How did that happen? Well, we hear principally of Joseph in connection with the early life of Jesus, notably in the infancy narrative, the first two chapters of St. Matthew's Gospel. We hear of the message of the angel about Mary's pregnancy to him in a dream, of the betrothal so beautifully presented in the altar to the right of the main altar of our cathedral of the need to go to Bethlehem to register in his home area, of the birth there of the Messiah, of the flight into Egypt, of the return to Nazareth, of the finding of the Christ child in the temple, and then silence. The only interruptions occur a couple of times when Jesus is identified in his public life as the son of Joseph the carpenter. As he does not appear in further New Testament accounts, it is considered that he had died before the time the public life of Jesus began. Perhaps not surprisingly, Little attention was paid to Joseph in early years until then there was a resurgence of interest in the 15th and 16th century when he began to become very popular. I think Bernardino Siena featured Joseph positively in reaction to medieval mystery plays that made fun of him. St. Saint Saint Teresa of Avila was a great admirer and in fact dedicated her reformed Carmelite mother house to him. St. Francis de Sales, St. Ignatius of Loyola promoted devotion to him. And then a couple of centuries later at the close of the First Vatican Council in 1870, Pope Pius IX declared him patron saint of the Universal Church. And this was a consideration that Leo XIII had in his encyclical on labor, recognizing the unique role of, wor of workers of labor in society and certainly here, the role of St. Joseph stands out. Joseph is also the patron saint of a happy death, patron saint of fathers of families, patron saint of many countries, including our neighbor to the north, where in Montreal, there is the impressive monument of the Oratory Basilica dedicated to him. He is a patron of several religious orders, men and women. 
for some decades during Eastertide, there was a day dedicated to the patronage of St. Joseph. In fact, that was the formal name of the church in Somerville, Massachusetts, where I was baptized, received First Communion, and was confirmed. But the title St. Joseph the Worker, it dates actually uh, from 1955, when Pope Pius XII uh, directed that this particular feast in Joseph's honor be celebrated. May the 1st, or May Day, had been a day to recognize workers, especially among the socialists and communists. Recently, just a few days ago, the Bishop of Green Bay, Bishop Ricken, in, a recent, in an article pointed out that, quote, Pius wanted to elevate the dignity of work beyond the secular ideas of it. By connecting this celebration to St. Joseph, who, was to, who had traditionally been an example for and patron of workers, Pope Pius drew attention to the fact that work is simply not about the material world, there is a spiritual dimension to it. It is not only human, but it has supernatural connotations. Indeed, here we recognize that the dignity of work is one of the core principles of Catholic social teaching. Recalling the first chapter of Genesis, Bishop Ricken noted that, quote, it is through our work that we participate with God as co-creators, unquote. And at Nazareth, Jesus learned the creative work of carpentry from his foster father, Joseph. Incidentally, there is a tradition that Joseph, originally from Bethlehem, before the betrothal with Mary, had been involved in the renovation construction uh, ordered by Herod of the temple in Jerusalem. So Joseph was probably not quite as limited in his background as is sometimes you know, thought. And of course there are many parishes here in our archdiocese dedicated to him. Capitol Hill, Beltsville, Muganza, where I was in Southern Maryland. Now, I think in these days, when so many have had their work interrupted, stopped, ended by the virus and are unemployed, it certainly is a time to include Joseph's intercession. And so we say, St. Joseph the worker, pray for us. <laughs>